Welcome to the to the second part of the of uh, of the morning section. So our next presentation will be in, very interesting and be, will be about seismic protection techniques, and will be performed by uh, Luis Guerreiro and Evita Zivanovic. So Luis Guerreiro is an associate professor at the Civil Engineering Department of Institute Superior Technic. His main activity is on the field of dynamic of structures and seismic engineering with uh, an experience of more than 30 years. The focus of his work is the seismic protection of structure and vibrations control. He participated in many projects as a consultant for the dynamics of structures. Now, Ivica, Ivica is a technical director at Fresini Group. He deals with repair and new build structure solutions, including design, research, and development of Fresini techniques system portfolio. He also performs site assistance. So, uh, Ivica and Luis, whenever you you are ready, you, you can start. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to start to present the chapter about seismic protection techniques, base isolation, and energy based device. This is a conjunct work uh, myself, Ivica Zivanovic from Fresine, and also Charles Sinobert from Fresine, and Albert Duzzi from Numeria Consulting. Uh, I'm starting the presentation talking about base isolation on, on buildings, and then uh, Ivica Zivanovic will finish the presentation with the, the other topic. So, uh, when we deal with the seismic retrofitting of existing structures, there are many, many strategies. Uh, the common use or the, the most uh, used is to try to reinforce the uh, original structure, usually using larger cross sections or introducing new elements, and that conducts to uh, increase the stiffness. And if you increase the, st increase the stiffness, you are increasing the frequency or uh, reducing the period, so increasing the uh, seismic uh, demanding. There are also other strategies like using passive se seismic protection devices. In those, there are two main uh, uh, sets. Let's use the energy dissipation devices. That means we can also increase a little stiffness, but we increase a lot the damping. So we can pass from initial point to point B with a, in, a reduction in the acceleration. So the reduction of the seismic response or installing base isolation, and with base isolation, we have an elongation on the period. So we go to the uh, far right side of the response spectra uh, with a large decrease on the seismic risk demanding or the seismic response of the structure. Uh, we have also a little increase on damping, but that damping, it's not, uh, that increase on damping, it's not so important as uh, the use of energy dissipation devices because that increase on damping is more related with the control of displacements of the devices and not the structure itself. Uh, so lowering the super, super structure acceleration, the passive protection devices keep the structure behavior essentially on elastic domain. And that is a very good uh, goal or a very good object on the performance of the building. Uh, on the base isolation, the main goal is to separate the building from the horizontal movement of the soil. And with that, we have to decouple the structure from the rest of the world, let's say, using an interface that reduce, reduces the, the, the horizontal stiffness. That interface is uh, guaranteed by special devices that are uh, located between the building and the, uh, the soil where the movement occur where the seismic movement occur so that will uh, bring the period to values around three seconds so that bring the response to that this part of the response spectra and with a large decrease in acceleration but with an increase on the displacements as we can see in the next slide in this slide i am presenting the response spectra in a way that I, now it's uh, or popular, it's uh, re relating displacements with acceleration, where each structure is represented by a line with a certain period. 
So if we have a fixed base structure, let's say with a period of 0.55, so it's about two hertz, it's a large frequency, the response will be on that point. So eight meters per square, meter per square second. This is based on the response spectra of the Portuguese code. And, but if we use base isolation, the period will decrease. And when we decrease, the, we increase, sorry. And when we increase the period, the line becomes more horizontal and the point where it will cross the response spectra will be much lower in terms of acceleration, but much larger in terms of displacement. So we have an acceleration reduction on the structure that is important for protecting the structure from the seismic uh, action, but we have uh, increase on displacements. The good news is that the increase on displacements, not on the building deformation, but located only on where the seismic devices are uh, installed. So the deformation is concentrated on the seismic devices and not on the structure. When to adopt this method? Uh, one of the main advantages of using base isolation is that it's possible to install without uh, being able to use the building during the retrofit process. And that is important because we can in interfere only with the basement or in a very low story and we can maintain the work on the rest of the building. Keeping the structure's retrovision to a minimum because you don't need to interfere with the rest of the structure, only if you need to repair something that we have already, uh, some problems that we have already before, but just repairing, not to interfere in order to reinforce or rehabilitate the separate structure. The interventions will be located on the basement or on the story where the, the uh, blocks will be installed. Uh, this is a technique that the most uh, important, uh, let's say, advantage is that it not only protects the building, but also protects the what is the container of the building. And that it's important when we have special buildings with special uses, like uh, for example, museums or something like that, or with uh, sensi uh, sensible equipment. Because reducing the acerations with the base isolation, the movement at the building will be very soft without any problem related with the acerations on the equipment. The application of base isolation has an important limitation and that it's, uh, uh, it's something that it's, we must stress. To use base isolation, the building has to be separated from the adjacent buildings. So we have to uh, guarantee that the building can move from all the sides. And when we see move, it means something like 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters. It depends on the earthquake, but never less than 20 centimeters, I would say. So uh, it's important to guarantee that the building is free to move all around that limits the application to certain structures or for if you cannot uh, isolate a building in a block only if you isolate all the block what are the the bearings that we common to common to use uh, base isolation devices uh, has to guarantee uh, the following requirements horizontal movement capability capability so they have to move horizontally vertical support because the loads are transmitted through the, the bearings, recentric capability because it's important to recover the original position of the building and that is through the recentric capability of the, of the bearings and providing damping. Damping is, I would say from those four characteristics is the last important because damping is almost only, uh, the goal is only to control the, the displacement of the, of the of the bearing so it controls the dimension of the bearings dimension of the gap around the, the building but it's not uh, many interference on the accelerations that are uh, <coughs> transmitted to the top of the of the building there are these three types of bearings high damping rubber bearing so it's elastomer is similar to the bearings that are used in bridges for a long time L um, large rubber bearing it's a bearing with a nucleus 
uh, of lead that uh, during the, the process it will yield and dissipate energy. And then the pendulum if system that is a more recent solution, but with more than 20 years, I would say, or 30 years of use, and it is based on the behavior of panel to get the recentering force. So uh, the, the main problems when uh, uh, try to use base isolation is to decide where to position the, the isolation level and how to transfer the loads from the original position or the original situation to the, to the base isolation. Uh, the choice is mainly influenced by the following aspects. The intended use of the floor, which isolators will be installed, usually will be in the basement or in the floor that has a not so important use, and type of existing foundations, that is something that it, it has to be guaranteed because they are need to be the course are need to be transmitted, and the presence the presence of the tiers of stairs and elevators, and that is because when we cut the building with a horizontal surface, that will cut also the vertical uh, communications, and we have to deal with that and to think where it's better to uh, consider the the uh, isolation story. The the load the for the technique, the main problem is the transfer guarantee that we transfer the load from the original situation for the final situation with the, with the bearings. And in some case, uh, we have to use jackets, jacks to, to, to make the transmission. And sometimes we can use also the flat jacks in order to guarantee the transmission of the forces from the bearings to the structure. The design procedure, it's similar to the design procedure of a regular <coughs> structure with base isolation. So we have to guarantee the, the model, the global model of the structure and make a dynamic analysis of the, of the set. Just for to finish, the some sketch of the installation procedure. So we start to enlarge the column in order to guarantee a base for the transmission of the forces, then a crash lifting brackets those lifting brackets are to install the jacks to guarantee that the support of the vertical loads during the process. And then we cut the, the, the column, the existing column, in order to get space to install the, the bearing, then insert the bearing and route the bearing in order and guarantee that we have a perfect transmission of forces, of vertical forces. And then we release the jacks and we have the final situation with the bearing installed. I'm finished my presentation now. I'm going to pass to Ivica. Please, Ivica. Thank you, Luis. I will continue uh, as you uh, as you mentioned uh, about the energy dissipation devices. Uh, on the first of all, in continuation of the Luis uh, topic, uh, first of all, I, I will talk about uh, the uh, dissipation devices uh, related to building application, but uh, it's similar anyway for bridges that we will see just after. Uh, so they are used uh, as uh, as evoked a little by Luis at the beginning. In fact, uh, they are uh, they are devices that combine both the acceleration and the deep displacement uh, reduction of the structure for uh, use in buildings damper finally significantly will increase the overall damping or are marginally increasing the overall stiffness so in fact it is really depending of the of their location on the uh, what could be summarized here today is that the technique in case of flexible buildings damper are placed along the building's height on the for the base uh, with the base uh, isolation the damper are used at the, at the at the downstair level when the dumping provided by isolators is not is not enough so this is illustrated by the the graph at the right side related as i as i told about the base isolation of the uh, along the building eight and in the uh, building eight then it can also help to control the the vibration for some mass for example or some building and if Finally, if we look related to the displacement, 
So as I said, without damper, the, the, the displacement uh, will be higher compared to with damper solution and related also with the transmission of shift force uh, to, behave, to behave the building uh, uh, below the elastic limit. Uh, the dampers can uh, provide uh, an effective uh, complementary solution. So just uh, to illustrate the seismic devices more generally, if we are looking from the ground input seismic energy, uh, through the structure, uh, the part of the energy uh, is dissipated uh, by uh, the structure itself with limited damages, but it is depending uh, of the design of the structure itself. And with isolated uh, system through the devices, the energy will be dissipated on both the structural part and the non-structural part are finally protected. And in that situation, the operability of the structure is, tar is targeted, of course, to be, to be preserved after an earthquake. And finally, the energy restored by the isolated system to the ground. Just to illustrate, finally, the general uh, the general situation on when to adopt the, this method. Uh, as I evoked, it is to provide additional dumping to the structure for reducing acceleration and displacement. And just a summary of something that maybe we don't evoke, uh, but just a complementary affirmation is it could be also implemented for vibration control as a retrofitting solution to base isolation uh, when the acceleration reduction with vibration control is enough to provide an essentially elastic behavior of the building. Uh, as uh, mentioned by Luis, uh, uh, if neighbor buildings are too close to allow the base isolation, the building is too flexible then for base isolation or base isolation, sorry, and will induce a damaging uplift force in the isolators. This is why it could be helpful to have uh, some dampers in that case. And the building is flexible enough to exhibit interstory drift of, of several millimeters letting the, damper, the dampers in that situation to dissipate this uh, energy. Um, so related to buildings, there are two main uh, devices. One of them is the fluid viscous dampers, which is a, a, a oil system exchange between two, two chambers uh, as a, you can imagine a sort of jack on the uh, moving uh, the, the fluid uh, through one chamber to the other one, dissipating the energy according to the behavior law that it is uh, something like a, a constant uh, a force is uh, the combination of the uh, characteristic constant multiplied multiply by the uh, velocity at the exponent I alpha. And the, the other totally different uh, system, uh, which is a displacement, dis uh, which is called uh, displacement dependent devices, which is um, uh, a, a, steel, a steel frame that behaves uh, uh, in, in deformation or buckling restraint braces, as, uh, as shown, for example, in the right side uh, picture. On the, at the left side, we, we can see a damper installation. Uh, at, at the base isolation level uh, uh, during cons construction of the building. So uh, I evoked about the technique and the equipment I just described according to the graph uh, the, the two components. Of course, for DDD system, the, it is a bilinear law with force at the yield limit and the, the force at the design displacement. They are used in the seismic retrofitting design, as we explained, uh, with or without isolation. The techniques and the equipment are, of course, a key element for the methodology also to install the device with the need of, uh, of, uh, of course, to, to define the most suitable solution in terms of dynamic uh, calculation checking to define the R square pro pro protection, which is in relation to, in fact, uh, uh, need a clearance or space for the damper on their positioning uh, definition at the uh, design uh, checking. The wind and temperature condition, which is important also at the time of, of the installation, 
to, to define the correct length before installation of the devices uh, on all other aspects uh, as presented by Luis uh, just before. Uh, the equipment required is mainly for handling the devices which is are blocked in the right position. So basically in terms of length to be able to, to be installed in the dedicated area. And uh, all of them is depending of accesses on the dedicated method on lifting tools to be able to, to, to install. The design procedure, uh, I think, is uh, similar for buildings or bridges, and it was evoked by Luis. Uh, so it is uh, very important to well assess the condition of the structure or the building in that case, in order to be able to, to define the suitable base isolation combined with uh, energy dissipation devices when it is needed. And uh, it is depending, of course, of the seismic conditions, the soil characteristics, the building uh, design, in fact, in, if, it, if it is uh, retrofitting on the uh, state until, since the construction, sorry. And of course, uh, we, regarding the displacement and dumping requirements, uh, there are a uh, few codes. We just evoked the HCA. Uh, seismic evaluation and retrofit of existing buildings uh, which offer linear or non-linear static and dynamic procedures. And let's say just to summarize by graph uh, what we presented already, so I think we can shift uh, fast uh, on uh, re related to bridges and compare to the Louis introduction related to elastic approach, uh, which finally it's a question of design of the structure to dissipate uh, the, uh, the seismic uh, solicitation. So it is not a part, of course, uh, it is the minimum, but uh, generally speaking, it is not uh, uh, today what is used. The other method consists to have a ductile approach when finally there is, there is induced some, uh, if I can say as example, plastic hinges. So finally, there are some damages in that uh, situation uh, related to the structure based on the fact that we have, uh, by, by definition, some plastic uh, deformation and hinges. So the operability in that case is not granted after an earth square, sorry. And it is a costly uh, on the uh, time consuming repair work. What we are doing, uh, it is as I have shown before, uh, the fact that uh, a combination between uh, seismic devices, base isolation, and the structure contribution, the fact that uh, finally it is uh, uh, a solution that are able to ensure an operability which is targeted after an, earth, an earthquake. And, and uh, I think I don't uh, need to spend a lot of time uh, about this. We will describe this in the uh, FIB chapter. Um, the seismic uh, uh, protection system needs to be defined carefully uh, after having done a, a, a dynamic analysis uh, we, we having, and having defined uh, according to, to applicable standard the um, the earthquake uh, accelerogram or solicitation to be able to combine and provide for bridge application horizontal isolation from the effect of earthquake shaking an energy dissipation mechanism to reduce the displacement and the increasing of the fundamental period as we have seen of the bridge can subsistently reduce by a factor exceeding three in most cases the acceleration that can be developed in the bridge superstructure. Uh, the, the devices, I, I didn't put a connector uh, which finally create a fixed point, but just I illustrate in terms of energy dissipation, uh, what, the two typical equipment, one is uh, as mentioned, the fluid damper, which allow uh, during the service life, a structure free to move. And during earthquake, finally is able to dissipate the energy and after continue to let the structure free to move. And pre-stress damping uh, uh, springs, uh, which finally create a fixed point, uh, which can be an example on the railway bridges 
when the breaking first, for example, it could be interesting that to have a fixed point between the deck and the on the pier and can be insured uh, as an example by this uh, press first uh, dumping springs. And finally, is uh, uh, during the earthquake, is work as as a fluid damper. Uh, by dissipating the energy, and at the end, after the square earthquake, is able to re uh, restore the force and behave as a, as a fixed point. The two uh, behavior law as shown as uh, as uh, as the two graph just below, uh, with uh, during uh, slow motion of the uh, of the structure, small load or uh, on the allowing a free movement, and then uh, depending if it is. Uh, Fluid damper or, uh, or PDS, you have uh, the two graphs that are shown for during the high velocity uh, seismic event behavior. If you Just to summarize in terms of design approach, uh, what we uh, try to summarize during your presentation. Uh, the between uh, the moderate high or very high uh, event uh, we, when we have to limit the displacement uh, the solution could be as uh, as summarized before by uh, providing uh, lead rail, uh, rubber rubber bearings or hdrb or pendulum uh, when no dis displacement limitation and in terms of dumping request a combination between a damper and isolators, just to summarize quickly. And I have uh, finished, or we have finished, let's say, with Luis. Of course, we thank you very much for your attention. And also, as uh, I said in the introduction, we thank you all the contribution of the uh, contributor, sorry, sorry, of this uh, chapter. Thank you. Thank you, Vika, for your, uh, and Luis Guerrero, for your nice presentation. Uh, we have uh, uh, two, uh, three questions. One were, was already answered uh, by Luis Guerreiro, but we have uh, here two questions for my, from Maynard Gonzalez. So uh, he wants to know how to optimize the placements of viscous dampers and where do you commonly place visco viscous dampers in, in a building? I think this is for, for Ivica. In fact, uh, um... In fact, it is uh, uh, really a question of uh, of uh, the disposition of the building. I, I am not sure that you can see my uh, my mouse, but uh, uh, yes, just to give an example, uh, what is illustrated at the, at the graph uh, at the right side with base isolation. So you can imagine that it is a, a building with few floors, and uh, the base isolation, for example, the building is uh, supported on column. And between the columns on the building itself, there are uh, the isolators as we presented. And you can see some dampers in some situation when there is a, um, a, a big force to transfer. Norm usually we have a, 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 a wall, a wall able to, to connect the reaction and to fix the dampers between the this wall and the on the bottom end of the building itself. It is the two devices that you can see here in the picture at the right side that here actually are connected, just to give an example, between the column itself and the building top by fork. Okay, Vika. Thank you. But, uh, as I tried to explain, the, the question is good. The, the clearance is, is, is an issue, so it is needed to... Uh, to, first of all, if it is possible to isolate the structure, if we are talking about isolation uh, of, about retrofitting, uh, uh, then typically we have space to find able to find space for dampers too. But uh, we need to, of course, be sure that we are able to transfer this force. Okay, Ivica, uh, thank you uh, once again for your nice presentation, and thank you also to to Luis Gerard, the first uh, presenter.